Tomika, the third largest island in the Caribbean, has over a thousand caves. But before we get into that, let's speak about the origins of our island, Jamaica. Imagine the world 150 million years back, a time when dinosaurs roamed the earth and the Caribbean plate lay beneath the waves of the Pacific Ocean. Deep within the earth, a magnificent force stirred. A fiery plume of molten rock surged upward, birthing the very foundation upon which Jamaica rests today. As eons passed, this colossal plate went on a slow eastward journey, drifting through the ancient waters that separated North and South America. Initially, Jamaica emerged from the ocean's embrace, a proud landmass gracing the surface, but the tides of fate would soon shift. Approximately 40 million years ago, Jamaica vanished beneath the waves once more, sinking into the abyss below. For millions of years, the island lay submerged, cloaked in darkness beneath a mile of water. Yet, amidst the tranquil depths, a transformative process was underway. Layer of clay and mud settled upon the sunken landmass, gradually transforming into limestone, a testament to the enduring alchemy of nature. Fifteen million years passed in silent slumber before Jamaica stirred once more, rising from its watery cocoon. The land emerged in stages, with the majestic blue mountains casting their shadow upon the eastern horizon, followed by the lofty peaks of Dolphin Head and its neighboring highlands in the west. Over thousands of years, Jamaica's land changed little by little, like a flower opening its petals. But below the surface, there was a secret world, a maze of caves made from soft limestone. Rainwater slowly carved out huge chambers and tunnels, making rivers vanish underground. Sometimes par parts of the caves collapse, leaving big holes in the ground above. Now in the caves, life thrive. Many creatures like bugs and reptiles made their home in these cool, dark places. But the Taina people, who arrived later, held a special place of respect and awe in these underground worlds. Said that the Taino came to Jamaica over 2,500 years ago and they had a special relationship with caves. Now caves to the Taino held profound spiritual significance woven into the fabric of their beliefs and ceremonies. While historical event evidence suggests that the Taino primarily dwelled in village huts rather than caves, caves served as sacred sites for their rituals. Across Jamaica, Jamaica cave walls bear witness to their artistic legacy, intricate drawings and geometric designs hinting at a deeper connection to the unseen realms. Now legends whispers of a great cave in Hispaniola from which the Taino believed they originated. Though the Taino's use of caves as dwellings remains debated, these underground chambers held sway over their collective consciousness woven into the tapestry of their ancestral lore. In 1494, the arrival of Christopher Columbus brought a new chapter in Jamaica's saga. The tragic fate of the Tino unfolded with the arrival of European explorers, their myths and cultures eventually faded. Yet, parts of their legacy endure. Now we're going to speak about the Maroons the defenders of the cockpit country, and how caves fit into their story. In the wild heart of Jamaica, the cockpit country was a stronghold against colonial rule. Here in the twisting hills and valleys, the Maroons fought hard for freedom. 
Colonel Kojo led them with bravery, using guerrilla tactics to fend off the British. Though records are scant, tales speak of the Maroons' strategic use of caves of, as bastions of defense. The cockpit's rugged terrain lent itself to ambushes and surprise attacks, with Maroon fighters striking from the shadows to repel British forces. While the specifics of cave warfare remain shrouded in mystery, the cockpit's natural fortifications provided ample cover for maroon resistance. Though the details of cave warfare are unclear, you know, cockpit country did help defend the maroons well. The caves and sinkholes were like a maze, making it hard for the British to track them down frustrating British attempts at conquest. Now after Jamaica's turbulent history, a new era of exploration emerged, driven by curiosity and scientific investigation. Brave explorers ventured into the depths, eager to uncover the secrets of Jamaica's underground world. In 1757, Edward Long became the first recorded explorer of Jamaica's cave, offering glimpses into their hidden wonders. Over time, pioneers like Henry de la Beche and James Sawkins began studying the island's unique cast landscape. But it wasn't until the 1950s that cave exploration really took off. The Jamaican Caving Club, founded in 1958, led the charge, mapping unexplored caves and finding ancient artifacts. Ron Reed and Alan G. Fincham led the club's expeditions, mapping huge underground areas. They, their work inspired others like Adam Hyde, who found Tino Cave Art in Patu Hole. Today, there are several cave excursions that many can look forward to, such as the Green Grotto Cave, Joseph's Caves, and the Duncan's Cave. But with Jamaica having so many caves, there are so many that are unexplored, as caves can be pretty dangerous. And we can't wait to visit them or explore them virtually just for you. In part two of our video, where we speak about the specific caves, any unique stories they may have, and more. Now, if you enjoy this one, let us know by thumbing up or leaving a comment and subscribing for more. We will have a diverse collection of videos, Jamaican and or Caribbean or and or African theme. We might even explore beyond. So that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, commenting. And we'll talk pretty soon.